I'm here with David Dossett, who's the owner of Martello Alley and uh, the innovator behind something called Froid, let me try that again, Froid d'Art. Perfect. What is that? Well, it's French for really art on ice. It's something I came up with back in 2015. Basically, it's art in ice. It started kind of in an unusual way. Uh, back in November of 2014, my wife, Wendy, who's a teacher, who at the time was teaching uh, at a public school, told me that after dinner, she would go walking with her friends. You see, they wondered how she kept in shape, what gym she went to. Uh, unlike me, I've let myself go, go to pieces, but she hadn't. And they wanted to know how she did it. Well, she, you know, she said, I don't go to gym, I just walk. Great, they said, we'll go walking with you. Uh, so she was going to be walking after dinner. And I said, well, you know, Geekson's the limestone city. Limestone is gray. And after Christmas, all the, almost all the lights are brought back in, right? In Quebec, they leave them out all the time. But it's very gray in the winter after, after dinner. And um, I said, you know, it's going to be kind of dark walking. Wouldn't it be really nice if you had kind of a, an art walk? Because we don't have any art events in the winter. We have them in the spring, summer, and fall, but nothing outdoor in the, in the winter. And she said, well, the reason is it would get vandalized. And I thought, well, freeze it. So I researched it. And I don't know if you remember, years ago there was a Canadian Tire ad where they showed you how that eliminator ba battery would work in the cold. And they built a truck out of ice. So I located the company that did that. They're called Ice Culture, and they're based in Hensel. And I talked to them about this idea, and they didn't quite understand what I meant because they thought, okay, who's going to carve it? I said, no, 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 I just want to put art in the ice. Okay, so we tried it. We, I, I had one brought to, the, to my house, and everybody thought, wow, what a great idea. I think maybe we had 13 all together. It was such a hit. I've been doing it ever since, and Martello Alley is, uh, is, is sponsoring it uh, every year. Um, it, it's, it's kind of... I mean, it benefits the community because in the winter, we're all sitting around watching TV or Netflix now or whatever. This is a way for people to get out and enjoy something different. It also kind of invigorates the downtown of Kingston. Um, it's unique because nobody else does it. And, uh, and it's art, but it's also really amazing. Nobody else does it in town, but you um, you alluded to Montreal earlier, and I've, there are outdoor exhibits, art exhibits and stuff all around the holidays mm -hmm. and into the winter and all year round there. In Montreal, possibly, but we don't really do that here. I mean, it, it, uh, which, which is kind of surprising because, you know, when you have something illuminated like that, against the dark and, and the gray buildings, it really pops. And my wife and I met in Quebec City, and I know exactly what you're talking about. Winter is when you'll see everybody out. And that's what I'm trying to do here, is to get people out, enjoying the outdoors. And this does draw a lot of people from outside Kingston. What I'd like to see, though, and what I hope people will do, is follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And I'll be repeating that because um, that is the best way to keep in touch with us and the events like this that we hold because we do this thing every year and then we have a summer event and, and other free events and, uh, that people can participate in. But please follow Martello Alley because believe it or not, I've been doing this for 10 years and we still get lots of people who've never heard, heard of this. Tell me a little bit about how it actually works. Is Are all the... Um the displays in Martello Alley, or are they all around town? Uh, they're spread around the downtown. We have one kind of on the way to Portsmouth. I think it's going to be on Pembroke Street, but nine of them in the downtown area. And it changes from year to year because we get different people who partly sponsor them. Uh, but most of them will be like concentrated right in the lower part of uh, Princess Street, Brock Street. Uh, there would be some at the visitor center, that kind of thing. So um, it, it's it's a very it's not a very big you know, long walk, and you can get out and enjoy the town. There will probably be a lot of places where you can have a hot chocolate, 
You can combine it with your trip to the rink when you're skating. It's, uh, it's kind of a neat thing. And uh, as I said, no one else does it in this area. You mentioned you've been doing this for 10 years. What's the most interesting um, <laughs> artwork that you've had frozen in ice? Well, I think the first year we had uh, a friend of mine, Mike, who did whales. And it, it was absolutely, absolutely crystal clear in the background. He didn't fill it all in. So it looked like they were in a giant aquarium, a 300 pound aquarium. It was really stunning. And you can see that. I think uh, all of that was published by uh, Visit Kingston our first year. It was called The Superpower of Art and Ice. If you Google that, you will see that picture mm. and all the others from the first year. And also, Lori Kelly did a beautiful piece that was red and gold, and it was uh, plunked right there on the front lawn of the um, Rosemount Hotel. It, it really, really uh, was stunning. Now, is this your second year back doing a reel? That's correct. <laughs> um, tell me a little bit about the, uh, the effect that COVID had and, and the things you had to do to keep it going. Yeah, COVID threw us a curve uh, because uh, when, we were pl when I was planning this uh, and then COVID hit, I thought, well, this isn't going to be a problem because it's going to be outdoors. Uh, it's just a block of ice. It's going to be, you know, set back from the sidewalk. People will walk by and see it. Well, uh, <laughs> we were we were told to check with, uh, you know, the health local health unit, and they said, no, you can't have this event. And I thought, well, wow, what's the problem? Well, people could congregate and it could spread COVID. Well, I I don't think that's going to happen. But we could put a sign up saying, please don't congregate. Please, you know, no, that wasn't good enough because there had to be someone stationed there at each block to make sure, and that's a 24 seven, because these are out in the open, uh, to make sure people didn't con congregate and that would cost a fortune. So I said, we can't do that. Well, they said, well, you can, you can do it, but just don't, it can't be an event. That is, you can't put it on social media and you can't put a sign up. You just have the blocks there. They'll be placed there with no information. Well, that wasn't really uh, an option because we wouldn't be able to give credit to the artist. We wouldn't be able to give credit to the people who were co-sponsoring. So the first year, <laughs> um, we didn't have a lot of time. So I created these little models and mock-ups and made it look like it was there. Eh, it was OK. And I thought, well, OK, next year we'll be able to do this. We'll be past COVID. Well, no, we weren't. And by that time, I order, already ordered 10 more blocks. So we had 20 blocks to place around Kingston, but we couldn't. So <laughs> I thought, how am I going to do this? So I had just um, uh, signed up with a company called Matterport that does a digital tours. You, you take pictures and it puts it into a 360 digital tour. So that, OK, we're going to do that. But we're going to put the block there, but we're not going to put all of them. I'm going to get one block made and it'll have a semi-transparent um, uh, piece of plastic in it, plexiglass. And it's a special uh, product that I ordered from New York um, where you could project onto it. So it's like a, 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 a movie screen, but it's clear. So when I, I, the plan was to project onto it and hopefully it would look like the piece of art is suspended there in the, in the ice, even though it wasn't. <laughs> and so I had to do that. I just set it up 20 times. I'd set it up, put the skirt of snow around it. Um, we had to get a projector to project onto it. And then we took our photos, our 360 photos. Um, my friend David Yateman took his you know, um, drone photos. So we did all of that, and we checked it, make sure it was okay, and then we moved the block to the next location downtown. We did that 20 times. It was a lot of work. These things are 300 pounds too, so moving them around wasn't that easy. But it was so convincing that I actually had messages from people saying they went to see one of the blocks, but it, 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 it had moved. I said, well, it was only there while we were taking pictures as a virtual event. So we created a, a virtual event uh, during the last year of COVID. And then last year, we were able to put all 20 in place. 
but it takes a long time because they come in pallets. We have to be very, very careful when we handle them because if we even drop them even a little bit, they develop cracks and within a day the entire thing is ruined and you can't see the art. So it's, it's, um, it's a big thing. So David, just a couple of moments left. Um, just tell me again when the event is on and how to get more information. Well, knock on wood, it's going to be cold enough. They are coming on the 25th and that's when we'll be placing them around town. The 25th of January. Uh, the 25th of January and um, hopefully it won't be raining or anything. I'd have to kind of change the date, but with global warming, you know. Um, they're there until they melt. We, we don't remove them. Um, sometimes they last for a week, two weeks, three weeks. Sometimes they last for two months. So I advise people to see them as soon as they possibly can. Uh, kind of keep an eye on the weather. I'll be looking at the weather. If it looks like we're going to have a warm spell for two or three days, then I'm going to let them sit there until it's a good time because I don't want to put them out and have them melt right away. Uh, even though they are 300 pounds of solid cl crystal clear ice, they are susceptible to warm weather. Yeah. We do our best to position, position them so they don't get in the sun, but still warm weather is not their friend. So again, the, um, check the website. Yes. And um, for more news. Yeah, Thanks, I'll David, for thank coming you. out. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Appreciate the chance to tell people about this.